Thank God. Be sure and thank the guys on horses and helping people park back there in the back. Thank you if you got a four-wheel drive and you did park in the back. I parked Miss Allison's car in the back, all right? She was real proud of me. She said she had on some heels and said, I can't get out back there, so I had to drop her off up here, right? <laughs> Took her car back there and locked it in. But anyway, well, we may do a little SOS here in a little bit of a uh, JC3 SOS means scoot over some, like if you're in a, in a long aisle. We got plenty of room, though, got plenty of seats outside. So just want to welcome you all. Thank you for coming. We're going to have a great service today. We got water baptism, some great music. So y'all come on in, make your way. About five minutes, we will get started.
Well, good morning, everybody. Let's try one more time. We'll do it this way. Howdy, y'all. Oh, that's much better. They waking up. I think they woke. Are they woke? Yeah. No, they ain't no woke. They ain't no woke. Oh, woke. I missed the uh. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. We're glad to see everybody this morning. How's the sound out in the foyer? Can y'all hear all right out there, or do we need to crank Does it Does it sound like Ian? What do we need to do? This is something new for us, but we're glad we had to do it. Maybe we'll just go ahead and bust that whole wall out there and get some of these comfortable chairs in here. We sure glad to see. What is all these funky looking hats? Looks like the Easter Bunny had an accident on somebody's head. You ain't never seen I'm it. I'm trying to look to see if there's there's a couple more seats up here in the front. A couple more, not many. I don't know where my wife is. She's oh, she's standing over in the corner. She she's short. I couldn't see her. I got a belt you can use, Miss Charlotte, if you want to borrow it. Hey, let's get started like this right here, y'all. God, I love you, and I thank you for loving me. God, I thank you for this day, for the opportunity to be here this morning. Father, if it wasn't for what happened so many years ago, God, we wouldn't have anything to celebrate today. Father, we've, we've read the post about how great it is that man has walked on the moon and how folks think that's a big deal. But God, when Jesus walked out of that tomb on that Sunday morning, Father, that was a big deal. And God, we thank you for it. God, we thank you for all that you do for us. Father, I just summons your spirit in this place right now. God, I pray that everything that's done would honor and glorify you. Father, the music that's sang, God, the prayers that are prayed, the message that Pastor Chet's going to bring, Father, I pray that every bit of it was orchestrated by you and that you get the honor and the glory. Father, I ask now that you'd go through this service with us and on through life, that you'd forgive us of our sin and use us for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, here. A while back, I did a song by Marty Robbins, and I did it my way, which wasn't quite anywhere near what Marty would do. So this morning, I'm going to try to do one that's more a little bit in the Marty Robbins style. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I've actually worked on trying to do this song for about two years now, and I'll be honest with you, a little nervous about it. Me too. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know how to play it.
didn't make it all the way. Mr. Marty Robbins, y'all. No, not even close. Good morning, everybody. How many first-time visitors do we have with us today? Hallelujah. Make Woo. them feel welcome, y'all. Amen. They see out in the foyer. They got a bunch. They got one out in the foyer, that's all. We are so glad that you chose JC3 as your place to worship this morning. You could have went anywhere else, but the Holy Spirit <laughs> led you here, and we don't take that lightly, y'all. We really don't. We do things just a little bit differently. We uh, we don't have the traditional <coughs> piano and organ. We we play with a live band. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. Uh, you was good this morning, Ed. Amen. <laughs> if you'll look in the chair in front of you, there's a yellow piece of paper. That's called a communication card. If you have a prayer need, if you'd like to be water baptized, if you'd like to sell out and ride for the brand with us, if you'll fill one of those out, put it in the wooden churches in the back corners or the one out in the foyer. If need be, somebody from the church will contact you. That's also where you'll put your tithes and offerings if the Holy Spirit's leading you to give. We do not pass the hat here at JC3. We got a lot going on, so I'm going to uh, turn the preacher loose on the rest of the announcements. Y'all make him feel welcome. He wants to sing right. one. Good deal. I don't know if that little feedback's on me or you, Mike, but either way, sounds good. We're going to run through some quick announcements. First off, welcome to Jasper County Cowboy Church. We want to welcome you today. Amen. <clears throat> if you're a first-time visitor or a third-time visitor or whatever, and you're looking for a church home, we our motto is, if you, if you don't have a church home, welcome home. Amen. So, Hey, prayerfully consider, man, we do a lot of stuff at our church. we always reaching out to the community, doing things. So thank you to enjoy it. If you don't have a church home, we're glad to have you today. If you're traveling and here with some family in, we just want to welcome you. Hope you have a great day and a good, safe travel back home. Uh, we don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church. There's a little wooden uh, churches at the back of the auditorium and each side, and one as you leave on the right. If you give your tithes and offerings, that's where you do so. Uh, if you do give, we appreciate you very, very, very much. We do a lot of, lot of things to, to reach our community. Sale Barn, don't forget to stop by the Sale Barn. They have caps and shirts that say Jasper County Cowboy Church. I use these things as witnessing tools all the time. Uh, one thing I am going to do a little survey today. Uh, I, I actually had a little buckle made a couple of years ago for a couple of good friends of mine. <laughs> Scott's got his own. Uh, and I got another one here. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Miss Bobby to come get this buckle. It says Jasper County Cowboy Church on it. It's got the JC3 emblem. And on the bottom, it says Jesus is Lord. Y'all remember my testimony? The old pastor that led me to Christ, his buckle said, in gold, it said Jesus is Lord. So I had one of these, a couple of these made. Wasn't nothing fancy, but... Uh, I'm going to leave this buckle in the sale barn to, after church and Wednesday. Uh, if you're interested in one of these buckles, Miss Bobby will take your name and phone number. I can order these buckles. They're about $100 and $110, but they are pretty nice buckles. If anybody wants one, I give them away as gifts every now and then. But if you're interested in one, hey, it's just another, another banner for the church. So Miss Bobby will have that in the sale barn after church if you want to look at it. Men's prayer breakfast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Nursery. If you have a little one, take advantage of our nursery. You'll go through this door, take a right down the hallway. It'll be the second door on the right. You'll see the nursery there. If you got a child in nursery, they check, give you a number. Check these two displays. If, if your number comes up for your child, you can go check on them. We do a round pin, men's and women's Bible study at the back here in, one, in our offices at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. We're starting to celebrate recovery group, a small group start. We'll pick back up with our Bible study this Wednesday night. If you're interested, be here at 6 o'clock. Get with Miss Kayla, get a meal, and we go, they go upstairs and break up into small groups, men and women. And we'll launch the program in the next uh, month or so. so. We're starting out with small group meetings, so please come take advantage of that. We need a few youth leaders on Wednesday nights. We have uh, teenagers meet on Wednesdays, so... Let Mr. Cody Rame know if you're interested in that. Next Sunday, I will be in the big city of Beulah where I was raised. Amen? Several of you asked directions to Beulah. Type in Beulah Community Center and Google Maps now knows that Beulah is real. Praise God. 
It's a little bitty town. You go to Zavala, for, for you rednecks like me, you go over to the crooked tree and you take a left. I'm just joking. Go to Zavala, leave on 69 like you're going to go into Huntington or Lufkin. About two or three miles right outside of Zavala, Farm Road 1818. You take a left on 1818. The first intersection will be a four-way stop sign. Go through it and go several miles, and there'll be a T uh, where Farm Road 58 turns back to the right. And that will take you right to the Beulah Church, two or three miles on the left. That is the very same road that comes out by Lowe's on the loop which is Farm Road 58. So if you want to come to Beulah, uh, we'll get you better directions, but you can type in uh, Beulah Community Center. It's homecoming for the Little Beulah Church. Several people from here will come. If you come, bring a covered dish, but we want as many of you can to stay here and support Cody Rame, our youth minister and a great preacher of the gospel. So he, he's going to bring the wood Sunday morning. He's a great speaker. No pressure or nothing, you know. But anyway, uh, next week will be Beulah uh, Men's Gathering. This Thursday, April 21st, all you men, if you haven't signed up, we're going to have a men's gathering. We're going to have a skeet shoot. As many of you can, bring a box of skeet with you. We're going to have a ton of people. There's probably in the 60s, maybe 70 people signed up. So bring a friend, even if they ain't on the list. Bring them. Uh, we're going to shoot skeet, but bring, bring your shotgun and your, your ammo. Now, you know you're at a cowboy church. When they tell you to come to church, bring your gun and your own ammo. Amen. But we are going to have a skeet shoot, and uh, then we're going to have a fish fry. And that's why we're wanting to get a number, so make sure you sign up. The only table we got in the foyer today is at the back on the right-hand side as you leave. Make sure you get your name on there if you're coming. And if you've got a friend you're going to bring, please call the church office. Get a hold of me or somebody let us know, so we'll make sure we got enough fish. We're going to have a fish fry and a quick little Bible study. It's going to be a great night of fellowship between the guys. The bleachers are coming along great. Stop by the arena and check that out. Brings me to my big announcement. Jasper Pro Rodeo is approaching fast. Things are going good. We have some road signs. Miss Bobby can help you uh, with those if you'd like some today. We're sticking them in the ground at intersections. We're working about an hour, hour and a half north or south, east or west from Jasper. If you need a few road signs, Mr. Kurt's going to do a lot of those, but if you've got an area you want to reach, come see us and we'll fix you up. If you have not volunteered for the rodeo yet, raise your hand. You just volunteered when you raised your hand. Praise the Lord. But uh, if, if you haven't volunteered, make sure and get on the list. We are going to, this year, our welcome wagon will be our biggest team of all. So we're going to beef up the welcome wagon. We want to get you involved. Uh, we'll have some meetings with that in the near future. We got our directories ready. Miss Rachel and Miss Meredith and several others have worked on our directory. You can pick them up as you leave on the left side of the foyer if you uh, want to on your way out. Some of you already got them, I see. Every morning, Monday through Friday, I do a devotion at 6.40 a.m. So we encourage you to watch that. Also on Tuesday after the evenings at 7 o'clock, we do Testimony Tuesdays. And I want to get this out there. We have a lot of people watch it. This week, Billy Jack Sprayberry on Tuesday will give his testimony. He's the guy that has Jasper, the zebra, that come to church. He's got some pretty cool testimony of how God worked in his life. And the next week, y'all remember the, the, the rodeo family that lost their son in Derrida, Louisiana, Kelly and Reagan Williams. They're friends of mine. They lived in Lufkin. They are going to be doing their testimony live on Facebook of how God has taken a terrible tragedy and brought glory so you don't want to miss either one of these testimonies so always be looking on tuesdays don't forget to check the buckle out if any of you men are interested your kids once they go up to the buckaroo barn later on they will be uh out in the playground when you finish they're going to do a little e easter egg hunt out there so pick up your kid outside if you're going to be water baptized i want you to make a list right here i'm gonna let mike and ed fill in i'm gonna step down there and change shirts because i always get my shirt soaked so I'm, 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 I'm going to change shirts right quick. If you're going to get baptized, and let me tell you something. When people get water baptized, we, we cheer for them. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. You going to get baptized? I need a filler anyway. You say I'm a filler? I said I need a filler. If y'all still talk when I come back, it's over. <laughs> Sonia Johnston, come and get your gift card of 50 bucks for our store. <clears throat> Thank everybody that participated. We kind of was a little scared.
scared to have this. Um, we didn't know what our new people would think about us, but I'm going to tell you something. If you'll just stick with us, you will do nothing but laugh and have a good time here with Jesus first. Thank you. Come on, kiddos. Where's all the kiddos? Y'all come on. If you're in the foyer, come on up here. We'll find you back, find your way back. Here they come. They coming, they coming, they coming. Who's mercy sake alive? Who's got all these today? Ain't nobody claiming. Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie, you got lots of help? Okie dokie. If y'all would, let's do the pledge. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance. Y'all can be seated now. Oh, well, Dan, he's back. He's a quick change artist. That was quick. Be sure and check your display number one. They're calling for you for our nursery. All right, we're going to do some water baptisms. I'm excited. Make sure we got everybody lined up. Anybody else? All right. I don't have my headpiece on, so I'm going to get uh, Mike to help me out with this mic or Ed. Somebody just hold it for me when that time comes, once I take them down there. Uh, Water baptisms are, man, they get me excited. We, we do standing ovations around here for water baptisms, but when people are water baptized, the water doesn't save you. The blood of Jesus saves you, amen? But the awesome thing is when you do give your life to Christ, it's one of the greatest expressions of your faith that you can do by being water baptized. Actually, Jesus told us to be water baptized, so I'm excited about these guys. I'm going to ask them their name and, you know, just a quick, testimony some of them's like no nah, i don't want to talk at all i'm just gonna tell you my name and that's it but that's okay but they're what they've d done today is they have decided to follow christ and into water baptism and water baptism tells everybody whose side we're on it depicts the death burial and resurrection of our lord just like when we go into that water it represents the old man before christ how many of you are thankful that any man is in christ is a new creature when we come up, it represents the new man. We serve a risen Savior, and we're not the old person that we used to be when we make him the Lord of our life. So we'll get this thing rolling. Tell us your name, my brother. My name's Ron Stover. This is my wife, Latina. And uh, I've been with uh, church here for about two years now. And my testimony is that I'm a sinner. I haven't been good to my wife. I was an alcoholic and uh, serious anger issues. I went to rehab, gave up the alcohol. Uh, I, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, laid everything at his feet, and uh, now I'm here to be baptized. Now, if you look in your dictionary and look what a real man is, a real man stands up and says, I'm, I'm, fixing, to, I'm fixing to take my life up a step. Amen. So we're proud of you, brother. I'm proud. Go ahead and ease in that water. Oh, hang on to you there. Look at that. He got it. Let's scoot up forward and just sit down there. Amen. All right, brother. On your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, making him Lord of your life, it's my privilege to now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. I take wet hugs, man. I'm proud. Hey, this is my kind of fellow right here. You know what he said when I went to put him under? He said, you may want to hold me under a little longer than normal. I need it. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's love is amazing? Amen. And, you know, he works on our hearts. That's why I love for men to get together at these gatherings and the little testimonies because we all need a little spurring on. How many of you know what a hot shot is? Sometimes God put a hot shot on us. All right. This is, this is the wife. All right. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Good morning, church. Uh, I've been coming here about three years. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, sir. Um, so, uh, Ron, I've been trying to get him to come to the Lord with me. Um, I've always been a God-fearing woman. I uh, was baptized as a child, not as an adult. I uh, just come back from a deployment, and those things I'm not proud of. And uh, Ron, he came with me, and uh, it's time. This lady, make sure I do this right, you work at a, as a nurse in Houston, and so they're not always here, but they're always watching online. So they're extended family. They live close. When they are here, they come. But I'm going to traveling now, so um, I resigned there in Houston. Now I'm going to be a traveling nurse. All right. So we got JC3. Wherever, wherever they go, JC3 goes. We get to go too. Amen. And let our light shine for the Lord. Thank God for technology where it is today. They can still be connected to our church. So Miss Tina, hop on in there. She said she's going in just like she's here. Amen. All right. Ms. Tina, in your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, number one, we're very proud of you, and it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're not done yet, amen? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, girl. Proud of you. She come talk to me the other day, so I'm going to let you tell everybody who you are, and if you want to share a little testimony of what God's done in your life, that's okay, too. My name is Shirley Hillhouse, and I was baptized when I was 11, but after being here with the church with the, all of y'all, I realized that I need to step up. Man, isn't it cool how God challenges us? So, Miss Shirley, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for your commitment to Christ, but I'm glad of your commitment to be water baptized and step it up to a new level. So, he's on in there, and we'll help you out. Let's go right here. Yeah. She said, can you put my tongue under real good? How many of us probably could all take a double dunking on the old tongue? <laughs> 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 Ain't nobody pointing no fingers in here, right? Amen. Praise God. Miss Shirley, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for your commitment to Christ. And on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, if I don't get you on fire, you woods wet. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn this thing back over to the band. We got them over there working. That's a good thing. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So while I'm getting ready for me to sing, I wanted to say something. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook, but Friday I was thinking about the day that my Savior was sacrificed for me. And it really was a sad day for me because I, I was going to watch The Passion. And at, when I went to bed that night, I just couldn't do it. I could not see my Savior suffer for somebody like me. And then it's, I seen this post on there, and it said, Friday was a brutal day. Jesus went through brutality for me. Saturday, you don't hear anything about it because it was silent. God was silent. The heavens was silent. Jesus was silent. He was in the tomb. But it said on Sunday, victory came because he is alive. The song I'm going to sing is Mercy Tree. You get, we take it down a notch because it's, for me, I'm still in the silent day because Jesus has done great things for me. And I know he's done great things for you. So I hope this will bless your heart. of blood 
went to a lot of trouble to uh, make those hats. I don't agree with Ed. I think they're nice. <laughs> I can tell you put a lot of work into them. Are you actually disagreeing with me on that? I am disagreeing with you on that. They probably won't ever come back if they're busted. <laughs> no, I don't think they're busted. You can't make fun of people's hats, especially a woman's hat. He makes fun of mine all the time, Terry. That's different. Oh, well, but they're not wearing tacos. That's what it looks like, ain't it? Yes, sir. It's you, just <laughs> praising God. That's what I like. Yep, you missed it last week, Terry. This hat fits my sunny disposition. Well, don't take it off because you blind people. Sing, Terry. Paul. Oh. Wrong song.
to buy that heavenly home. The price was paid in full 2,000 years ago. Title deed is signed in blood. There's a guarantee that all who come to that old cross will find a bloodshed key. Yeah, and it's hanging on a nail on an old rugged tree just outside Jerusalem at a place called Calvary. And that he can open heaven's door and lock the gates of hell. You'll find that key on that old tree hanging on a nail. That key can open heaven's door and lock the gates of hell. You'll find that key on that old tree hanging on a nail. You'll find that key on that old tree hanging on a nail. Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask the lay pastors to come up. Miss Allison, if you'd join them. We're going to open this last song up as an altar call. If you need prayer, just let the Holy Spirit lead you to come on up. If the rest of you would stand and worship with us.
Friday. But we thank you that Sunday is coming. And we forget that we are worthy. Lord, remind us what you hung on that cross for. Remind us that your blood covers all sins, not just one. Lord, we thank you for your love and your forgiveness because we fall short of your glory every day. We ask you to go with us today and, Lord, remind us of what you did that day for us, what it truly means. We ask you to be with everyone in this house, Lord, all their needs, all their failures, Lord. Remind them that your blood washes all that away. We ask you to be with Chet today, dear Lord, as he delivers the message. Let it touch someone's heart, dear Lord. Go with us through the service. I, I pray your spirit falls in this house, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you make welcome to the stage, Pastor Chet? Amen. We appreciate our band and the music department. Amen. Up in this sound booth and everywhere in between, they bless us with lots of great music. We appreciate it. Amen. Hey, uh, they wanted me to mention, make sure if you get your directory, uh, it should have your name on the front of it. So if you got somebody that wasn't yours, they got them personalized. So it's really good. I'm going to pitch this back down there. But uh, just make sure if you got the wrong one, they'll have one just for you with your name and picture on the front of it. Everybody blessed today? Amen. How many of you are thankful that God is so good? Amen. Uh, he, he, he is good. So we want to thank you for coming and choosing to worship with us. Uh, like Mike said, you could have went anywhere. But uh, you chose to come worship with us. We got a big crew in the foyer and the overflow, too. So the kiddos are going out. What's going down if you're a visitor? That's the buckaroos. They're going to go upstairs and uh, do their lesson, and then they'll be back down uh, outside in the playground in a minute. So let's give the buckaroos a good hand clap as they go. <laughs> All right. Amen, amen. But we want to uh, thank you for choosing to come worship with us, man. If you don't have a church home again, welcome home. We'll find something for you to do here. We're very busy. We got between two and 250 volunteers at our church. Amen. I've never seen anything like it. So it uh, takes us all, though, and we need you on the team. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer to get this started. I'm going to uh, talk about our Lord and Savior. It's one of the easiest things to do is share the love of Christ with other people. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you today. We praise you. We thank you for all you do for us. <clears throat> We're thankful, Lord, that the tomb isn't empty, that we serve a risen Savior. We ask you to speak to our hearts today. 
And Lord, may your word penetrate our hearts and may we leave here and be doers of the word, not just hearers only. We thank you, Lord, for dying for us, but not only that, for rising from the grave. We love you. Speak to our hearts. May we leave different in Jesus' name. Everybody said? When we pray, if when we may we leave different, we're saying, Lord, if we need a spur in our side, go ahead and do it, right? Or if we need a hot shot on our tail, we, we, we need it. Sometimes God has to challenge us. I know the baptisms challenged me. It encourages me to see men and women alike saying, I need to step it up a little bit. I'm going to follow the Lord in water baptism and continue to serve Him. Let's put that pic I sent you, Miss Cheryl, up. We'll get started with that. And then we're going to hit a few verses here. We'll find our place in Matthew uh, chapter 28 and then Luke 24. If you got your Bible and want to follow along, isn't it great to see that stone rolled away on the tomb? His, this here says he died as a lamb and rose three days later as a what? A lion. He died as a lamb and rose three days later as a lion. Rejoice for he is risen and the grave is, help me out, empty. Death has lost its sting and the grave was what? Defeated. Thank God we serve a risen Savior. So Sunday is here. Amen. This is when we get to celebrate a risen Savior. Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 and 6. Actually, I'll probably just run along with y'all on the screen. Matthew 28, verse 5 and 6. I'll read it here, and you got it in large print. How many of you like the large print? <laughs> Amen. All right. Verse 5. The angel spoke to the women, so they went to the tomb of Jesus to take spices. Most of us know that. You can read that in earlier verses, but... The angel spoke to the women and said, Don't be afraid, he said, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is what? Risen from the dead, just as he said would happen, and come see where his body was lying. So isn't it powerful and, and, and awesome that an angel spoke to them and said, Come see where he lay? Uh, Luke chapter 24, we're going to look at the, there's several accounts of the resurrection. Luke tends to be my favorite, so verse 1 through verse 7. Luke 24, verse 1 through verse 7, it says, But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. Now, this was a very, very heavy stone. No man was just going to roll it. They found the stone had been rolled away. And the reason they put a heavy stone there is they didn't any, want anyone, the religious leaders, to steal the body of Jesus because he had predicted that he would rise. Can I get a good amen? amen. And so they wanted to make sure they didn't want anyone to, to, to steal the body. And so they put this huge, heavy stone. And, and they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. So we got angels. Can you kill that uh, bass amp? It's humming. Verse 5, the women were terrified. Man, it got quiet, didn't it? Praise the Lord. <laughs> you got to be all around hand when you do this. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, PJ. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. When the men asked, then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? That's my favorite translation. Luke brings it out. So they look for Jesus. And the angel says, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Let's say it together, who is alive. Verse 6 says, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, verse 7, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. We all know that he was crucified on a cross, a Roman crucifixion, a brutal death, and that he would rise again on the third day. He predicted these things, and I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that he went to the cross. But the cool thing about Easter is, had he just went to the cross, we wouldn't be complete like we are. He had to rise and defeat death, hell, and the grave. So Easter Sunday is like the Super Bowl Sunday for church. Amen. I, I, love, I love Easter Sunday. I, I love the fact that we serve a risen Savior. And I'm going to go ahead and read verse 11 and 12 of Luke 24. Uh, verse 11. Y'all know I'm, 
I'm not the greatest preacher, but I'm a good cheerleader for people. Amen. To cheer people on to serve God. Because God knew you was a mess when he got you, right? Now, some of y'all look real holy when you didn't say nothing, you know. God knew you was a mess when he got you. But aren't you glad he can take a mess and turn it into a message? He never gives up on you. Sometimes we give up on ourselves. Sometimes friends give up on us or whatever. But God himself never gives up on you and I. He loved us so much. It wasn't the nails that kept him on the cross. What was it? It was his love for us. But verse 11 and 12 of Luke 24, it's pretty cool. I'm a big cheerleader, so this jumped off the screen. I wanted to add it today. It says, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men. So what happened was these ladies rushed back from the tomb to tell the, the 11 disciples. Y'all with me? The men that walked with Jesus and seen him do all these things. So the women run back with the story that the angel told them, but the story, verse 11, sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, everybody say, however. Peter, I like Peter, amen. We know Peter denied the Lord. He's my favorite character. I believe in the Bible. He denied Christ. His heart was right. But when it came down to the crucifixion and they said, do you know this Jesus here? He said, what? No, I don't. He, 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 he sold out. He, he bowed out. But God wasn't through with Peter. And so verse 12 says, however, all the men, the disciples, thought it was just a joke. It sounded like nonsense. However, Peter, what did he do? He jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping inside, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. And then he went home again wondering what had happened. But I like Peter's attitude. I mean, he made some mistakes, but he got right back up. How many of us in here have made mistakes? Lord, we need to pray for liars. I saw 15 hands at all these folks. 440 people in 15 hands. How many of us have made some mistakes? We all have. But Peter was willing to admit that. We all know. He said, Lord, I'll never turn my back on you. How many of us done that? I'll never turn my back on you, God. Well, I, I wouldn't do that. I'll go to prison. Peter even said, I'll go to prison. I will die before I deny you three times. Oh, man, we, our hearts are willing, but this old flesh is weak. But when you do, if you do fail him, please don't fall in the trap that Satan puts in our mind to run away from God. When you do stumble, you need to run to it. Just like the prodigal son, the Bible says that the father was out on the edge of the porch, and I believe that God was leaning a little bit. Waiting on his son to come home. You know what I mean by leaning? He's looking. And he had a fatted calf prepared. That, the father had been feeding out that calf for a while. He knew his boy was going to come home. How many of us know what it is to look down the road and see God leaning off the front porch a little bit? And, and, God, and he probably looks at us and we're like, here I am, Lord. We don't want to look him in the eye right at first, right? We, we've all took our own little journey, right? Let me put it like this. Every one of us in here have a chapter in your life you don't want read out loud. But I'm thankful that God knows everything about you and I, and he still loves us. Now, he wants us to step it up. He wants us just like we talked this morning. Uh, he wants us to step up and follow him. But I'm glad that he don't give up on us. But Peter denied Christ, and we know the rest of the story soon as Jesus rose, he said, go tell my disciples and Peter. A personal invitation. So that's one of my favorite scriptures. And see Peter jump up and run to the tomb. He was a type A personality. Yeah, he fell on his face, but he got right back up. All right. I am thankful that Jesus died on a cross, but he did not stay there. Amen. I put a little, little, little post up this morning on Facebook. And y'all think about this. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Now, you think about it. That gets me kind of excited. You ever, how many of you ever got a hold of something you couldn't handle? Right? And in different ways, we, you know, some, some, I never liked to fight, but it, me and, did any guys in here used to like to fight? Uh, I didn't like it. It was too rough. It's, it's too much work, man. <laughs> Let's get along. I'm a peaceful guy. Until you cross my family or something, all right? But then it's Western. But we're not going to do that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I'm a peaceful guy. But, you know, 
I, I, everybody, no matter how tough you were in high school, there's always somewhere in another town somebody that's tougher than you. No matter what you do, it's just the way it is. And so <laughs> when, when Jesus defeated, it says death couldn't handle him. So we've all bit off more than we can chew, right? In some form or fashion, you know, well, I think I can break that horse. Anybody ever heard that? And, you know, they, you, you might get some of them, but they're, I got a hold of one one time, a Mustang. I thought, boy, I'm going to break him. I'm gonna, I never did. I gave him away and said, I'll pay you to come pick him up, please. I thought I could get it done. Only time that's ever happened, but he got me, and I was glad to see him go. And I gave him to a, a buddy of mine, and he said, I'm going to get that horse going. I said, oh, boy, I hope they got video cameras. He takes him home, gets where he can saddle him, and he, he, got, he starts riding him. And he riding him in an old chicken pen in August one day. You know, we're unpredictable, right? Aren't you glad God loves us anyway? How many of us, we're going along with Jesus good, and then we'll have to start pitching one day. But he, he, he can handle it. But this old horse broke in two with him in a chicken pen, and there was dust flying everywhere. It, 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 I, I hate to say it, but I laughed when I seen it. So I told him that thing would buck. And he got on him, and man, there was dust flying, chickens running everywhere. When the dust all settled, he was crawling on all fours, getting away from that crazy son of a gun. But we've all bit off more than we can chew. But death couldn't handle Jesus, and the grave literally could not hold him. When you write down a date, and you write down the date, if you write a check today, or if you write something, and you have to write the date on a piece of paper that you're filling out Monday through what, no matter what day of the week it is, when you write down the date, even the calendar is revolved around our risen Christ. It is B.C. before Christ and A.D. after Christ. So the calendar even goes around. When you see flowers and trees blooming this time of year, can I, how many of you enjoy that? It represents life, and we serve a risen Savior. One person put it this way, Easter represents a second chance. How many of us need a second chance? How about a third or a fourth or a fifth or a hundred and tenth? But I am thankful that we serve a risen Savior. And I'm, I'm going to wrap this thing up, but I'm going to tell you, when Jesus came to this earth, he was referred to as the Lamb. John even saw him walking down a road one day in John chapter 1, verse 29, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How could he take away the sin of the world? He was God's Son. He was placed on a cross. He was brutally <laughs> dismembered, all kinds. Of, he was beaten with a cat of nine tails. That means a lead whip with barbs in it like a fish hook. It ripped out his flesh. They shoved a crown of thorns on him. All those things. He, he was like a lamb led to slaughter as a sheep or led to a shear. He came as a lamb. He humbly died. The Bible says he could have called down legions of angels and stopped it, but he took it. He took it because he loved you and I. And yet he came the first time as a lamb. The Bible says if you go to Luke, uh, Matthew 28 and read about the crucifixion and the death of Christ, the Bible says in Matthew 28 that when Jesus died, there were earthquakes over this whole earth. Darkness fell on the face of the earth. And the Bible says this, that the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom only god could tear it from the top but what was a veil it was there was a there was a, a holy place and there was a holy of holies and only god's presence was there in the ark of the covenant and no man could go into the holy of holies and live through it that was the old testament every year we would have had to get together and sacrifice the blood of an animal and that would simply cover your sin for a year Aren't you glad our sins aren't covered now? There, are, there is remission of sin. They are washed clean. But he went as a lamb, and even when he died, darkness fell on the earth, earthquakes happened, and the veil of the temple was ripped down. He died as a humble lamb. He was born in a feed trough, guys. The Son of God came and died. Born in a feed trough. He was humble. He was a carpenter. Just an everyday man, but he was God in the flesh, and he died and, and became an example of what a real man is, to take what he took on the cross as humbling 
He came as a lamb, but I'm telling you this much, he rose victorious as a lion. When that stone was rolled away and Jesus stepped out of that tomb, everything changed because he defeated death. Can I get a good amen? He came as a lamb, but when he comes again, guys, he'll be king of kings and lord of lords. And if you read your Bible, you'll find out he'll be riding a white horse. He will come back, not as a lamb anymore, but he'll be a king of kings and lord of lords. When he rose from the grave, we serve a victorious Savior that rose from the grave. And my favorite part about after the resurrection is when he said, all right, guys, basically he met with the disciples. They were afraid of him. He met with the disciples, and one of them, remember Thomas? Anybody been Thomas before? Oh, doubting Thomas. We've doubted the Lord, right? Nobody wants to make eye contact right now, right? We've all doubted God before. But old Thomas, yes, he did doubt the Lord, but he reached many people. Study Thomas after he felt the nail holes in his hands and the hole uh, from the spear in his side. Study Thomas, you'll find out that he reached continents for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a good amen? So no matter how you start the journey, you don't have to finish it that way. God uses us. And you think about it, that Jesus rose from the grave and said, Come on, Peter, follow me. He said, Go tell my disciples and Peter. John 11, verse 25. I'm so thankful for a risen Savior. I'm going to pop that on the screen. I'm going to use the New King James Version. Jesus said, John 11, verse 25, I am he who lives and was what? Dead. And behold, I live forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys. Everybody say keys. Keys represent authority, right? So we serve a risen Savior. I have the keys to hell or Hades and to what? Jesus, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that Jesus took the sting out of death. The reason Resurrection Sunday means so much is, is that we don't have to fear death anymore once we understand what Christ done, if, we, if He is our Lord and Savior. I've done thousands of funerals in my life. And I can honestly say, man, to do the funeral of a believer in Christ, it's such a it's a sad thing, but on the inside, we're excited. We know that we're going to see that person again. I'll never forget April the 10th, I believe, in April of 2010. My little mama was 87 years old. And we gathered around their bed at the hospital in Nacogdoches, Texas. Me, my brother, and my sister. We're going to see my sister today. I'm 52. My sister is 82. I was a little late, late coming along, right? She's got some dementia, but we're going to go in there and take her a chocolate malt. And, hey, she may not remember exactly what's going on, but she knows what a chocolate malt is. Amen. <laughs> Me and my sister and my brother, we gathered around that bed. And our little old mama that cooked cat head biscuits for me since I was that tall. She was in the, nearing the end of her life. She was my biggest fan somebody wouldn't show up at church and i couldn't I, <laughs> I couldn't even hold a flashlight for a drummer but i'd get up and play drums and after it was over my mother would find me she'd say that's the best drumming i've ever heard <laughs> my mama never heard her say a curse word i never heard her get angry but one time some of the older grandkids, my brother, my sister's kids, I don't know who it was. Somebody got sideways with some of the grandkids, and all my mama said, she leaned up in her little chair. She was eating a biscuit, amen? Biscuits will make you live a long time. She was eating a biscuit in the big city of Beulah, and we had found out somebody had said something about a grandkid, and she was sweet now, and she eased up, and she said, they better not mess with my biddies. Now, tell me who this was. I thought, whoa, whoa. a hit lady straight out of you. But we gathered around that bed, and we grabbed the hands, not stout, and we prayed for my mom. And we knew she was going to depart this life. And we, we cried, but yet we rejoiced. We rejoiced, and 
Every time I think about Easter Sunday or I read a scripture about Jesus and hope and how he defeated death, hell, and the grave, it's so much more than just blessing us on this little time we have on earth. It's about spending eternity with those that know him. And I think about, I can't wait till I get to heaven. I'm, I, I, I want to see Jesus first. Then I'm going to holler at Paul. I like the Apostle Paul. Amen. He's one of my heroes. He was tougher than woodpecker lips. And when I say that, he was tough. He floated on a log for a day and a night to go preach the gospel in other countries. He was on ships that wrecked and went through all these things. He was beaten within an inch of his life and left for dead and got up and shook it off and went on and preached. How dare me whine when somebody hurts my feelings. Or I don't know if I can serve the Lord. So I'm, I'm going to meet Paul. But then I'm, I'm making a beeline to find my mama. Be no more stomach issues. She had diverticulitis. There won't be any more of those days. She'll have a brand new body because Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. I think I preached myself happy. <laughs> Revelation 1.18 and we're done. Revelation 1.18, Jesus said... He said, I am the living one. I'm going to pull that up in the NLT. I, I got a picture of it. But he says, I am the living one. I died. But look, I am alive. Here we go. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am what? Alive. Amen. And I have, here we go, the keys of hell and death. There was a heavyweight battle. What did Jesus do for three days and three nights? It was a heavyweight battle. He took on hell and death. And as I said, death couldn't handle him. It thought it could. You ever seen Rocky? Number 312? But Jesus died and everybody thought it was over. Can you imagine how discouraged the disciples were? But when he rose from the grave and stepped out of that tomb, but during that time, the Bible says he went to hell and tasted death for you and I. And he defeated the grave. The Bible says, where, oh, death, where is thy sting? And grave, where is your victory? And so I challenge you today, do you know my Savior? He is the heavyweight champion of the world. Can I get a good amen? He died. He bench-pressed the sin of the world. He took the sin of all of us, no matter what your background is, where you've been, what you've done. He died for the addict. He died for the doctor, for the lawyer. Makes no difference. And he will take you just like you are. But he loves you too much to let you stay that way. Amen? He'll start cleaning you a little bit and working on you. So my challenge is, do you know him today? Do you know him? And I'm going to close with a little prayer. But before I pray, I want you to look me square in my eye. And I'm going to tell you this. Everybody talks to God. People say, well, I'm an atheist. I don't pray. That's your. <laughs> you will one day stand before God. And let me give you a scripture. It says, it is appointed unto man once to die. Everybody in here one day will die. Now, at my funeral, I want a party. Because I'll be more alive than I've ever been when you do my funeral. I'll be in heaven with my Jesus, not because I deserved it, but because he took my place. And that's why every day of my life from now on, I plan to serve him and put him first. The only thing I can take to heaven with me is someone else. <laughs> Think on that. But everybody talks to God. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, to face judgment even as christians we will stand before god we won't be judged between heaven and hell because we've made that decision on this side but we will stand before god and we'll give an account of what we did for him and he give the gifts and callings that he put on us amen let's pray anybody here sound of my voice watching live or here if you don't know christ your lord and savior today is the day to get it right I'm going to pray this prayer. If you're in here today, say, pray for me, Pastor Chet, or watch it online. Those in here, raise your hand. No one looking around. Say, pray for me to come to Christ. Rededicate. Man, awesome. Hands across the room. Let's pray. This is the prayer I pray when I come to Christ.
Cowboy Church in 1993. Oh, God, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of where I've failed you, Lord, and give me a new start. I want you to have your way, Lord, in my life. Take the reins and use me for your kingdom. I make you my Lord. I'll never be alone again. You'll always be with me, even though I don't feel like it at times. Lord, guide me and lead me and have your way. In Jesus' name, everybody said, man, we love y'all. Let's just give the Lord one big hand clap. Oh. No offense against anybody else, but you can go to the grave of Muhammad or Buddha, and they're still in the grave. The Bible was written over a 1,500-year period. Jesus resurrected, and, and, and the awesome thing is, history has never been able to find the remains of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I wonder why. We serve a risen Savior. Go tell somebody about Christ. You don't have a church home? Hey, you're ours now. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless y'all. Amen. Don't forget, you got kiddos, they'll be out at the playground. Okay, hey, Miss, Miss Brittany said if you got little ones in the nursery, go ahead and get them and bring them out to the playground so they can hunt Easter eggs too. So we're going to have a good time in the parking lot.